The universe creates, destroys, and balances, maintaining equilibrium throughout its vastness. Approximately 275 million stars die every day, and with them, planets, civilizations, and light also perish. Yet the same number of stars are born each day. Every star undergoes its own life cycle, much like living beings. Everything in the universe has a life cycle, from microscopic organisms to monstrous black holes. The fate of all living things ultimately ends with death. One day, the universe itself will die, leaving behind nothing but darkness, without even a single photon in existence. Betelgeuse supernova explosion to illuminate the night sky all over the world. Our sun is currently a main sequence star, or in its prime, a time when it is radiating a tremendous amount of heat and energy. Yes, things seem favorable for Earth in the solar system right now. Earth is nestled in the Goldilocks zone, where life can emerge and sustain itself. But this will not last forever. The sun is getting hotter with every passing century, and in about 5 billion years, it will enter its red giant phase, during which it will begin expanding until it becomes a red giant. At that point, the sun will be around 200 times larger and 2,000 times brighter than it is today. About 2.5 billion years after that, the sun will likely engulf Earth. So the sun has approximately 7 to 8 billion years left before it sputters out and dies. That's a long time, and we humans will most likely destroy ourselves before the sun can do it for us. Or perhaps by then, humanity will have evolved into a type 3 civilization, no longer dependent on the sun. After the sun successfully becomes a red giant, it will implode, collapsing in on itself and transforming into a supernova. While our sun still has millennia left to shine before reaching its judgment day phase, there is another star in our galaxy that is on the brink of exploding. Betelgeuse, Orion Constellation's most famous star, and now a bright red supergiant, is nearing the end of its life. It will likely explode as a supernova, becoming visible during the daytime from Earth. But why is this so extraordinary to us Earthlings? Stars explode all the time in the vastness of our cosmos. However, a supernova hasn't been observed in our galaxy since the 17th century. This would be a once-in-a-lifetime sight that we wouldn't want to miss. While we do not yet know if it poses a threat, scientists have discovered a telltale way to detect when a star is about to go supernova. This revolutionary new discovery could help in developing an early warning system before one of these massive cosmic explosions occurs. Welcome to Star Extreme where there is a little space for everyone here. Simulated data from a study showed what red supergiant stars might look like in the year before they go supernova. These stars swell in size before exploding and become dimmer and fainter. The simulations revealed that before this explosion occurs, a cocoon of circumstellar dust builds up around the star, making it about 100 times fainter in visible light during its final months. The dimming may be caused by a sudden accumulation of material around the star, which obscures its light, though scientists are not yet sure how this happens. So, does the dimming of Betelgeuse mean it's about to explode? Because Betelgeuse is so close to our planet, when it explodes and turns into a supernova, it will be bright enough to be visible during the daytime for weeks. With this information, astronomers will be able to point other telescopes at Betelgeuse to study the physical conditions of the star's atmosphere as it prepares for the final countdown to its self-destruction. In 2020, Betelgeuse suddenly blew off a gigantic portion of its surface mass. No one in the world had ever seen anything like it, a sentiment shared by NASA. While solar flares are common, this eruption was much stronger. Our sun frequently throws tantrums with a strong solar flare observed on October 2nd, 2022. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory captured an image of the event, identifying it as an X1 flare, one of the most intense flares. As we approach the solar maximum, a time when solar flares are most frequent, strong, and potentially catastrophic if they hit Earth, the Betelgeuse eruption was a much more massive explosion. This particular ejection was 400 billion times the mass of an ordinary solar flare from our sun. Scientists have stated that the unusually large amount of ejection in Betelgeuse is certainly a phenomenon that requires further understanding before they can provide any definitive answers or conclusions. 
While we know that red giants burn through their fuel much faster than yellow dwarfs like our sun, what is particularly interesting is that the star mysteriously dimmed all of a sudden. Astronomers around the world were perplexed as to why this phenomenon was occurring, but none had any explanations at the time. It will be some time before we have any definitive answers about Betelgeuse. Some other supernovas we might study are on two other red supergiant stars in the night sky. The first is Antares in the constellation Scorpius, about 555 light years away. And the second is Aldebaran in the constellation Taurus, about 65 light years away. For now, though, we have another spectacle unfolding right in front of our eyes. Or should I say, in front of Webb's eyes. The James Webb Space Telescope has provided us with some amazing images, and through its lens, we have begun to explore the universe like never before. While NASA is using the telescope to scan the skies, independent researchers are also conducting scientific work with the help of Webb. The most recent image released is of a region producing stars at an extraordinary rate. Researchers using the James Webb Space Telescope have captured an exceptional image of a strange galaxy. This galaxy, called NGC 1365, or the Great Baird Spiral Galaxy, has one of the highest star formation rates of any galaxy we've ever observed. At around 60 million light years from Earth, the galaxy was previously captured by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2020. But what we are all eagerly waiting for is for Webb to turn its eyes toward the Trappist system in the Andromeda Galaxy. Discovering a habitable exoplanet with liquid water or artificial